of how Hopper can offer significantly higher levels of privacy than, for example, Tor or a VPN, of course. Yeah, would be happy to see many people joining our team and change data privacy for good. Hello everyone, this is Alex from Gaines. Today I'm joined by Sebastian, founder of Hopper. How are you doing, Sebastian? Hey Alex, great to be here. Uh, nice to be in touch again and yeah, tell you and your community more about Hopper and why privacy is such an important thing for crypto and Web3. So yeah, please tell us, what is Hopper? Yeah, so Hopper is privacy infrastructure for the Web and Web3. What many people don't really consider when we're using peer-to-peer -peer networks, which decentralized, is how actually many times decentralization ends up worse on the privacy side than better. And it's something we're trying to address by introducing privacy infrastructure on a network level. So for example, if you are interfacing today's world, let's say with a bank or Facebook, or Google or something like that. Many times you don't get scammed, right? Many times your privacy does not leak because you trust these like big companies. But actually, if we think about a Web3 world where everything is peer-to-peer -peer and decentralized, you don't have any trust in any of these peers out there. It's just some dude on the internet, right? So let's say you're streaming a video from somebody. You know, right now it might be YouTube and you trust YouTube somewhat to not tell the whole world what you're streaming right now. But in a Web3 world where everything is decentralized and you're streaming from some person out there, that's not the case, right? So it might be that somebody's act more actively harvesting data about you than on the web of today. So basically what, what this example shows is that we really need to think about privacy more carefully in a Web3 setting than we do in today's world. So in a nutshell, what Hopper does is it allows you when you exchange data, for any sort of application, could be Ethereum transactions, could be, you know, like, like some files that you share, could be like web applications, to deliver these in a metadata private fashion. So if I'm talking to you right now, this is sent directly to you and exposes who is talking with whom, who is exchanging data with what services. And Hopper is protecting that sort of metadata. So what we do in a nutshell is that instead of sending data directly from A to B, it hops via multiple intermediate relay hops and thereby obfuscates the sender and recipient of data. What would you say against the, the classical statement that why do you need privacy if you have nothing to hide, which is sometimes, I guess, used by governments? You think you have nothing to hide, right? But then again, if you have no privacy, you also have no ability to disclose. So I don't think privacy is about hiding anything. Privacy is about selectively disclosing information. So for example, why would for-profit corporations out of North America know when I send my ether around, from which IP address I send it around, and what other web services I was consuming before and around that, right? This could have like pretty dramatic influences on me, right? Because if you only see that information, let's say Sebastian was reading news on a certain website, right? And then Sebastian was like selling his ETH. This is information which you can read just from metadata, right? You can, you can see what news sources I was consuming and you can see how I acted upon that in the market. So, and, and with these pieces of information, you can directly influence my decisions. You can influence my trading decisions. You can influence my, you know, political decisions and information that I have. And that is something that is pretty profound. And I really think we need to rethink the things. So even if you think you have nothing to hide, why would you give up information to for-profit corporations? Like a for-profit corporation wants to make money. That's the only thing they want to do, right? So. Why would you give them information that they can actively use to influence your decisions? Cool. So just to, to go back to really how it works, Hopper is different than privacy coins. It goes further in the use cases. Could you tell us, you know, privacy coins, for example, what do you think of them? Do you like them? Do you own some of them? Privacy coins, I think, are important, are, are an important step, right? So do you have native privacy on your L1, like on the blockchain, such as Zcash, such as Monero. 
Um, I am actually optimistic that privacy will be brought into blockchain such as Ethereum natively. I think privacy coins are important, but I really hope even more strongly that we see privacy as a feature being brought to general purpose ledgers such as Ethereum. And Hopper, on the other hand, is not a privacy coin. At Hopper, we're not running our own blockchain. So basically, we're using the established Ethereum blockchain and the security guarantees that it brings us to run this privacy network on top of it. The Hopper token is an ERC-20 token on Ethereum that is powering this uh, incentivized Hopper net. So how Hopper works is that you send a packet to a hop. So when I send data to you, for example, I would send it to Alice. Alice keeps this packet for a short amount of time, is caching it, is mixing it up in, in other uh, traffic before she passes it on to the next node. Also, these packets are made indistinguishable by traffic. So if you observe the next network, we call this a global passive adversary, who's really observing the entire network. Could be your internet service provider, could also be like strong nation states. Even if such players observe the network, they would not be able to link incoming and outgoing traffic. And that's what is called a mixed net. And that is one fundamental difference of how Hopper can offer significantly higher levels of privacy than, for example, Tor or a VPN, of course. If you run a Hopper node, you get paid for relaying packets. And that's kind of our core um, invention. It's what we call proof of relay. So you, as a relay node operator, get paid on a packet by packet basis when you forward um, a packet to the next person. Then you receive kind of a, a secret bag for each individual packet, and it might be a profit for you, which is settled on a Hopper payment channel network on top of Ethereum. So the Hopper token, in short, is staked by node operators. It's used as a payment token for users of the services. Users of the services could, for example, be applications. Let's say we have a metadata private Zoom or metadata private like Spotify, let's say something like Audios maybe, then these service providers would likely pay for that, right? And thirdly, it's a, it's a governance token. So um, we're very excited about governance and decentralized governance and decision-making processes. And that's where the Hopper token comes in also. We've seen a bunch of uh, governance proposals already in our early network where um, the community of token holders gets to vote on certain decisions. I'm curious to you, know more about you and, and your team. Uh, what's your background, especially maybe in security, as this is uh, the topic cryptography? Yeah. I'm an electrical engineer and did a PhD more in micro uh, engineering um, before going like full time into crypto in um, actually tw late 2015 when Ethereum DEFCON 1 happened, which was kind of like this pivotal moment in my life when I really realized that, okay, this is a big thing. This is like as big as the internet was. And then for the, for the next four years, I was actually full-time consultant. So I was educating people on what Ethereum is, teaching them how to write smart contracts. We're working with anything from universities where we organized like summer schools at EDH Zurich in Switzerland. So in 2018, me and my team were building like a lot of tokens and ICOs, obviously, tokenization platforms, like stuff that was that was kind of hot back then. Through that process, we realized really that for building truly decentralized applications, there's infrastructure missing. And while a lot of great stuff is out there, right, obviously financial settlement layers for general purpose blockchains are around. It's decentralized storage is around, right? So there's storage, there's SIA, there's Filecoin. But the thing that is not solved was data exchange for the Web3. Like if we have this full stack of Web3 applications, what we still need is a means of exchanging data on the Web3 that is privacy first. And that's how um, we decided to, to start Hopper. Tell us about the, the current use cases, the people who are using the Hopper. Uh, what's the, the volume of data they're, they're shielding, they're, they're making private? Uh, yeah. Any companies using it? Is it mostly individuals? Is it mostly transactions or also data? At the moment, Hopper is being developed on the infrastructure level. So we want to make it easier for node operators to run Hopper to gain insightful information and to optimize that process. 
we have a bunch of uh, proof of concepts that we're that we're working towards. One is actually from a medtech company, because a medtech company actually has they have nothing to do really with crypto. But there's a pretty interesting problem, and that's something that's pretty big in the industry out there, which is like data privacy compliance. If you're working in a hospital and you send data to a cloud facility, the cloud facility must not know where the data come from because they could link it to personally identifiable information. So especially in such highly regulated environments, we do need to unlink the source of data, for example, the hospital, and the destination of data, for example, the cloud center, which is like this one is highly regulated and the other one is highly unregulated, right? And to unlink such uh, use cases, we need a solution like Hopper that can be used to exchange data privately. Yeah. You talked about nodes. What does it take to run a node? Is there a minimum of tokens needed? What are the technical requirements? Yeah, it, that's, that's a great question, right? So if you want to run a node, um, we currently have a, um, we, our, our main network is live, but it, it does not have incentives just because we want to build like a more stable version of our network. We do have in parallel like incentivized test nets running. Uh, where people can gain rewards for running a node. It's not very hardware intensive, so you can run it on um, your laptop. You can also um, run it on like a DAP node, like a dedicated device that is, uh, is running your Hopper node and the Ethereum node or a Bitcoin node or whatever you may want to run, because it makes sense to have this running 24 seven. There is no minimal staking requirements. So we want to see many Hopper nodes out there and we don't want to make it very expensive. But the more Hopper nodes, Hopper tokens you stake on your node, the more funded payment channels you have, the more traffic you can relay, and the more you earn. All right, cool. Is there anything exciting that you guys have released recently or that you're working on that you'd like to share? Yeah, so we have actually um, released a staking program. So if you participate in our test nets, for example, you can earn NFTs. And these NFTs are boosting your staking rewards. So that's something that I think is like pretty interesting for the community to check out. So if you want to get started and run a Hopper node, I would recommend that you check out our test nets. So we have a new test net coming up um, on Polygon. And this uh, Polygon test net will be incentivized. So you can run a Hopper node and earn Hopper tokens for, for doing so. Is there anything else you'd like to mention? We are also hiring at Hopper. So if there's anybody who is interested in building privacy infrastructure, please contact us to join the team. We're looking for, especially for um, like senior engineers and uh, privacy researchers who are interested in building the next level of privacy and innovation on the internet. So yeah, would be happy to, to see many people joining our team and change data privacy for good. Awesome. Well, thank you, Sebastian, for explaining us what you guys do at Hopper, talking about privacy more generally. Yeah, all the links will be in the description for people who are interested in either getting a job or just running a node or learning more. Guys, smash the like button. If you have any questions, feel free to write a comment. I'm sure Sebastian will be looking at them and subscribe for more awesome videos. And on that note, thanks again, Sebastian, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me on the show, Alex. It was a pleasure. Thank you and bye-bye to you all.